over the last week or so, I've not uh, posted any new content, um, but I guess it's time for us to uh, start back again, you know, into uh, posting new content. And so this week, we're going to talk about uh, redox equilibria. Now, if you remember, over the last, you know, couple of weeks, you know, we've already talked about um, solubility product equilibria. We've already talked about uh, pH or acid-base equilibria. And I remember when I was discussing the solubility product equilibria, I also mentioned, you know, a little bit about uh, complex formation equilibria or what they call the complexometric equilibria. And this week, you know, I'm going to now focus on uh, redox equilibria. And then later on, you know, we're going to talk about phase distribution equilibria. But this week again, you know, we're going to focus, you know, on uh, redox equilibrium. So the objective uh, for this chapter, you, you know, is for you to appreciate the relevance of redox equilibrium uh, for applications related especially to sensing. So my focus is going to be mainly on sensing. And I'm going to focus on a technique uh, called potentiometry that is based on redox equilibrium. All right. I think I'm also going to mention a little bit, you know, about the other relevant application of redox equilibrium. And, and that is things like the energy devices. If you look at most of the energy devices out there, you know, the solar panels or the so-called the photovoltaic cells, you know, they are based on electrochemistry or redox equilibria. Of course, there are the numerous uh, physiological and environmental and toxicology, you know, applications where redox equilibria is uh, relevant. For example, I think I mentioned before, um, you've got, say, uh, elements in different oxidation states, say chromium, can have an oxidation state of uh, 3 plus, but also it can have an oxidation state, you know, of 6 plus. If you look at the toxicology levels of toxicities, you know, of chromium 3 plus and chromium 6 plus is actually very different. Chromium 6 plus is more toxic than chromium 3 plus. And as far as such, you know, our electrochemical equilibria then is important when you're discussing, you know, toxicology applications. And so sometimes it's important, you know, to do what you call speciation, which is distinguishing different types of oxidation states, you know, of different elements because they've got different impacts as far as their toxicities, environmental, physiological toxicities are concerned. So hopefully you guys appreciate, you know, the redox equilibria first, you know, as an application for sensing, but also, you know, for other types of applications, as I have mentioned. Now it's important, you know, for you to remember that each chemical entity, be it an element or a molecule, it has what I call, or what we call, electrochemical signature. And so we can use electrochemistry, you know, for qualitative analysis, that is to differentiate different types of chemical entities. But also, of course, we can use it, you know, for quantitation. Uh, take a look, you know, at um, the standard reduction potentials that you guys know about, you know, for all different types of elements. And so we can say that different elements, you know, they get oxidized at very, very specific, you know, oxidation potentials. And they could also get reduced at very, very specific, you know, reduction potentials. And you guys did this in Chem 101 and 102, you know, about the standard reduction or oxidation potentials, you know, for different elements. And that's what I'm saying that every element or every molecule has got a very specific electrochemical signature. And as such, you can use it uh, for qualitative analysis. 
So for those of you in biology or interested in biological applications, I implore on you possibly to consider, you know, and read on your own, redox biology, which is another vast field, you know, where uh, electrochemistry or redox equilibria is very, very, very relevant. And so if I would say, among all the different types of equilibria, you know, that we've talked about, I would say in the environment, in the physiological applications, maybe redox and pH are the most relevant, you know, of those um, chemical equilibria. And as such, I'd like you to pay close attention to the relevance of redox equilibrium. So, what do I mean by redox equilibrium? Redox essentially means re is for reduction. Y you know, and do uh, re redox, you know, is for reduction and OX, you know, is for oxidation. Alright? So, essentially, you know, we are referring to chemical reactions, you know, that are the reduction which is an acceptance of electron or adago oxidation you know which is a donation of an electron when something donates an electron you know for example you've got a metal you know and then it donates you know an electron you know you can see its oxidation you know actually oxidation state increases you know so that is oxidation and of course, the reverse, you know, is going to be reduction. All right, so redox equilibria refers to these kinds of reactions that are the reduction and oxidation. Now, you're going to see that we'll be measuring, you know, voltages, you know, because anytime you've got, you know, this transfer of electrons, you know, you've got, you know, voltage that is induced. And sometimes we call voltage as... Um, electric potential, we call it as voltage. Now, you can generate a voltage, and this is important, you can generate a voltage any time you've got a charge separation. So any time I've got polarization of a molecule, you know, then I can generate, you know, a potential difference or a voltage. I'll give you an example. Now, all of us have been facing major problems in the lab when we are doing weighing because the analytical balances, you know, keep fluctuating. And I keep telling you, chances are, is because you are using the latex gloves, and the latex gloves induce a lot of static electricity. How do you induce static electricity or voltage? It is because of what you are calling the charge separation. In a time... I've got two dissimilar surfaces. In this case, it will be your glove and probably, you know, the analytical balance or the beaker. I've got two dissimilar surfaces. Chances are I'm going to have a charge separation that is induced because of those two different surfaces that have got different conductivities. And as such, you know, they induce static electricity. When that happens, you know, you can actually measure a voltage. Take an example, you know, also, you know, of our bodies as well. You know, we are comprised, you know, of layers of different membranes. And so each membrane, you know, has got a certain voltage, you know, because of it's a layer of different types of membranes. And so our bodies as well, you know, have got a lot of potentials that are related to, you know, different membranes, different tissues, you know, you've got veins and so on. And again, all that induce an aspect, you know, of charge separation as the ions, you know, migrate, you know, between different membranes in our bodies. And so you can see, again, electrochemistry or redox equilibria becomes very relevant, you know, as far as, you know, migration, of the ions or metabolites in our bodies. So the basic function of redox equilibria, you know, is an electrochemical cell. And so I'd like you guys to be reminded, you know, of how an electrochemical cell works. 
I think all of us know an electrochemical cell typically comprises, you know, of two half cells. And the two half cells, you know, are conjoined, you know, by, in the outer circuit, you know, they are conjoined, you know, by wires, of course, a conductive element, a conductive wire. And the inner circuit, you know, is conjoined, you know, by what you refer to as a salt bridge. And a salt bridge, you know, is just, um, it's just really a membrane, you know, that can help in the transfer of the ions, you know, between the two beakers or between the two half cells. And so the inner circuit, you know, transfers the ions across the salt bridge. And by the way, the salt bridge can simply be a piece of paper. All right, you know, where ions, you know, can migrate between the two solutions. But also the salt bridge, you know, sometimes people make it using a gel such as agar. And again, it can be, it's a semi-permeable membrane. Essentially, that's what it is, a semi-permeable membrane where ions can transfer between the two reactions, you know, that are in the half cells. In the outer membrane, on the other hand, you know, what you really have is the transfer of the electrons that would be resulting, you know, from oxidation. Assume you've got anode in this case, cadmium, and goes oxidation to give you two electrons, you know, that can be transferred through a wire, through an outer circuit, and then they come here to the silver the silver accepts those electrons um, to make a silver wire or to make, you know, a coating of silver. And so that is really what an electrochemical cell, the two half cells where the outer circuit, you know, is um, giving you the migration of the electrons. And of course, that's electricity, meaning I can measure it using a voltmeter or even using an amperometer, an, am, uh, an ammeter, you know, to measure amperes, you know, and so on. I hope that's clear. In, in terms of the notation, we often use, you know, these kind of uh, two strokes to divide, you know, the two half cells, okay? You know, so meaning this side is one half cell, the anode, and the other side, you know, is the other half cell you know, the cathode. Now, remember, we sometimes call this, you know, a galvanic cell, you know, meaning it's got these two components, you know, these two half cells, and electrons are migrating, you know, from the cathode, you know, to the, to the anode. So, to measure the E of the cell, Okay, the E of the cell, you know, would be you take um, the half cell on the right hand side, you know, meaning that guy, we call it an anode, all right, the half cell on the right hand side is called an anode, and then you subtract it, you know, from the E or the voltage, you know, associated, you know, with, uh, the, right, with, the, right, with the left hand side you know, which is in this case, you know, the cathode, okay? And essentially when you do that, you know, you're going to measure the E of the cell, you know, that's associated, you know, with that uh, reaction, you know, that is taking place. And essentially, you know, that is the basis, you know, of a potentiometric sensor, meaning, you know, in the cathode, I've got um, an unknown, and in the anode, you know, I've got, you know, um, what is known or what you refer to as a reference, a reference electrode. So this one, the potential is known. And this one, the potential is unknown. And then I can now measure the E of the cell, you know, which is going to be equal to the potential that is fluctuating, you know, that is unknown. And as such, I can use, you know, these kinds of electrochemical or potentiometric probes for detection, all right? So in this case, remember, in potentiometry then, we are actually measuring the voltage. We are measuring the voltage. In potentiometry, we are measuring the voltage associated with the redox reaction. 
And so you can use, you know, these kinds of probes, you know, for applications, you know, such as determining even the end point, you know, of a titration. Remember, for example, what we did before, you know, when we were titrating, you know, chloride, you know, using, um, using, uh, using silver. And we called it a gentimetric. We called it a gentimetric titration. So this is the analyte, and we are titrating uh, the analyte using um, silver, and we call it a gentimetric titration. And we said the head point can be determined using color indicators, but also you can actually use uh, um, you, you can actually use a ref you can actually use a chemical probe you know, that can measure silver, you know, so silver chemical probe can be used actually for redox titrations uh, such as such as that. So in potentiometry, the voltages, you know, that you get, you know, of course, that is the E of the cell and E um, that one is the standard reduction potential, you know, the standard reduction potential. Those are the voltage at standard conditions. Again, remember those are constant, and I showed you earlier in the very first slide. And so you can actually measure, you, you know, the voltages as a function of concentration using this relationship called the Nast equation. Of course, ourselves, as analytical chemists, we are interested in concentration. Now, the instrument is giving us the voltage. What's the relationship between the two? The relationship between the two is based on these Nast equations. So the voltage that you get is proportional, you know, to the concentration that you are looking for based on the Nast equation. Now, remember the RT and the... F, the Faraday's constant, all those are constants. And when you calculate them, you're going to see the result in a constant, which is 59.196. So this one is results from the R, which is 8.314. Temperature at 25 degrees is 298 um, degrees Kelvin. And then the Faraday's constant, you know, is that. And when you calculate it, you're going to see is equals to 59.16. And N refers to the number of electrons that are transferred, you know, between the anode where the oxidation is happening and the cathode. Okay. And so essentially you can see I've got a reaction like this that is taking place, the redox reaction. And when I substitute, you know, my products, you know, the Q, you know, the reaction quotient, the products divided by the reactants, you can see now this is the full Nast equation that relates my potential from the potentiometer and my Q or the components of Q, the reaction quotient. Okay, you can see again this is a variation of this, uh, where this is the reduced species, you know, divided by the reactants, which are the oxidized species. Now remember. The Nast equation, you know, can also give you the redox equilibrium constant, you know, the K, you know, redox. It can give you that. And again, based on the Nast equation, I think you've already seen this reaction. If we wait for the battery, the galvanic cell, to actually die, you know, at that point, you know, we say the reaction is at, at an equilibrium. You know, because you are getting, you know, the same electrons, you know, being generated during the oxidation, being consumed. And so I'm not getting any electricity being generated. And at that point, you know, the reaction is at an equilibrium. And so the E is equal to zero. The battery is dead. And at that point, the Q, the reaction quotient, is equals to the K. And that's how people actually determine the equilibrium constant, you know, of different types of reactions. You know, you put them in a galvanic cell, wait for equilibrium to take place, measure the E of the cell at that point, you know, which is equals to zero. And then what you'll be getting would be the standard reduction potential, which relates, you know, to the 
k equilibrium constant. So I've just mentioned, you know, for potentiometry to work, ideally what you want is, you know, one of the half cell on the left hand side, you know, this guy, which we called an anode, all right? And then this guy, we called it a cathode, okay? Ideally, we don't want both of them to be fluctuating. So often, we would fix this, you know, so that the only thing that is fluctuating, you know, is what is on the left-hand side, okay? And as such, you know, we can get the E of the cell being equals to the E on the right-hand side minus, you know, the E on the left hand side and the e of the left hand side you know is actually this one is called a reference electrode and it's called a reference electrode you know because the potential here is known it's actually fixed all right and so the only potential that is changing is the right hand side you know which is what you would call the sensor Sometimes they call it the indicator, the indicator electrode, the right-hand side is what is changing, okay? So there are different types of reference electrodes out there. Now, you have the silver-silver chloride reference electrode, and like I'm saying, the reference electrode, the voltage is known because the solutions, the solutions concentrations are very, very well known, okay? And so in this case, actually, they make it, you know, just by taking a silver wire and then you bleach it using chlorine, you get silver chloride. And then you fill, you put it in a tube containing um, HCl so that you can get this kind of a reaction, you know, taking place. And the concentration of the HCl should be known. I think it's around 2.5 molar. And the potential is known so that one is not changing so this one is the most commonly used reference electrode so that is the that is the anode another common used reference electrode you know is a so-called saturated calomel electrode and it's very very similar to to to, to uh, the silver silver chloride so the only difference is we replace the silver you know with the mercury and everything else remains the same and the potential is known because it's 0.241, it's fixed potential. The last type of reference electrode is a so-called saturated or standard hydrogen electrode. And in this case, you know, we just have a platinum wire. We replace the silver with a platinum wire. And then we fill the tube, you know, with HCl. And we do, um, we do electrolysis, you know, so that we generate, you know, hydrogen. And we have the potential fixed at 0, 0.00 volts. And this one, by the way, it's arbitrary. It's just an arbitrary fixing, you know, 0, 0.00 volts, okay? But the most common reference electrode, you know, is a silver-silver chloride because saturated calomel electrode, as you can see, it's made of mercury and mercury is toxic. And so it's no longer very, very common. All right. And it's very, very easy, actually, to make these kinds of electrodes. And we make them in the lab all the time. My, my research group doesn't buy. We just make them ourselves. So that is potentiometry. And potentiometry, it's only one type, you know, of electrochemistry technique. And so in the next lecture, you know, I'm going to talk to you about... Um, the different types of electrochemical techniques with potentiometry just being one of them, okay? So potentiometry is just one of those techniques, but there are so many other electroanalytical uh, techniques.